أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. So I went to Hajj last year. And when I went to Hajj, there were things that I wish that I could have brought with me or some things that I forgot. So what I did is I made a checklist. A Hajj checklist that I would like to share with everyone who is willing to go to Hajj or had the intention to go to Hajj next year, inshallah. So you will benefit and don't have to go through the things that I went through, inshallah. The first thing is first. The most important thing is your necessary medication. We had our, you know, uh, group member. He was extremely ill. He had his medication in a luggage. He lost his luggage. So his whole Hajj experience was, we thought he was going to die. And he was about to die. SubhanAllah, I don't know what even happened to him. But in the end, he was shaking and he was... Anyways, put your medication, your necessary medication, in multiple bags. Just in case if one of them got lost, or if you lose one, you still have your medication. Your medication is extremely important because it's either you can finish your Hajj or not finish your Hajj. Um, other things you might need, you might need some pain reliever. It is good when you get, you know, if you have a migraine or headache, you will be able to do the Tawaf or something like that. In Hajj, there's something called the Hajj cough, you know. Everybody gets sick, so if you got some chewable vitamin C or if you get some cough drops, they will help, especially in the end of the journey. Uh, one of the most important things that everybody tells you to bring is petroleum jelly, which we know as Vaseline. Why? Because there's, there's going to be so much irritation, especially for men when they wear the um, ihram, especially with between your legs. So always apply Vaseline by the biggest bucket you can and apply them before you need them. Because if you already get irritated, it will be extremely painful the whole trip. Okay, so um, I, I bought a big container and when uh, in, in halfway I was I had to buy some over there uh, So make sure you get a big container and use it often as you can uh, Other things that uh, people uh, you might want to get is some deodorant and since you cannot get any scented deodorant um, Some people will try to sell you some deodorant that are not scented for $20 or more you don't have to do that. You can go to any supermarket and you can get the Tom of main brand. This brand, they make unscented uh, deodorant, which no problem. Same thing when you go uh, to the Middle Eastern store. You can buy like Nabilsi soap. These soaps are made from olive oil. Uh, they are the cheapest soap in the world, although they are organic olive oil. That's really strange. But we talked about this uh, before. Uh, the soap. It's also unscented, you can use it as well. Uh, other thing, let's just uh, finish off the uh, the things that we need um, other than soap is uh, the, you know your toothbrush, of course, uh, mouthwash. Some people prefer to use miswag so they can eliminate all of these um, scents and they didn't want to deal with it. So you can buy it from, you know, when you get there, there's multiple uh, places you can buy the miswag. So it's not a big deal. So this let's put these aside now let's talk about the journey itself one of the most important thing um, you have to do is you have to plan and plan your ibadah uh, you don't want to find yourself well, looking at your time at your watch and thinking what well, you know you don't want to waste time because the whole trip is in you're in the state of ibadah um, so have a plan how much things that you want to accomplish of course this is just one-on-one -on -one things we have to do before we get anywhere an advice that I would like to give to my brothers is to take an extra ihram with you. The one ihram that you will wear when you go to the airport, right? This is if you're flying. Uh, so always take a, an additional ihram. You can use it as a towel. And specific, especially when you go to the, to the haram when you're in front of the Kaaba, if you want to make wudu, you don't have to go make your wudu and lose your place if you're like close to the Kaaba what you can do you can put the ihram on the on the on the floor you have a little bit of water of zamzam you can make your wudu and it will not make, you know you won't make a big mess uh, this is very uh, useful uh, especially when the times are difficult to go to the wash area to make wudu especially if there's a lot of people when it gets closer to the prayer time it gets really crowded so this is a really unique thing to have an extra ihram with you um, other things that you need you might need some slippers really invest in some good uh, quality slippers me personally I see that the croc brands usually give me the most comfort and didn't give me any problems 
uh, other uh, remember that uh, people do copy the original so when they you can see like the copy of the crocs or whatever brand and these things are really rough and when you walk especially if you do to, you know if you walk a long distance your foot starts to swollen and the whole trip becomes extremely painful if it does get painful you know just be patient inshallah you'll get rewarded for every step uh, but that is something that you have to keep in mind um, if that happens taking socks with you will always be a, a good thing wearing socks two three on top of each other when you do the tawaf it will take that pain um, uh, and make it much easier okay so when you wear the the ihram uh, you, what you, you might want to get is a, a waist pouch or the money belt you know the white it's a white color it's a thin one not the really, really thick ones the, the thin one you can put your money you can put your passports and uh, what you can do is you can roll the ihram so it will become a support for the ihram and will be extreme you know secured you won't lose any, anything inshallah um, of course there will be a lot of walking in Hajj so you might want to also invest in walking shoes comfortable walking shoes there will be a lot of walking and if you are sensitive if you have sensitive eyes you might want to get some sunglasses they are useful as well we are getting into the summer and the hotter days of Hajj so just keep that in mind uh, you need a backpack but uh, when you deal with your travel agent, he usually supplies you with a backpack that you can put your shoes in. It's a light backpack or shoe backpack. When you get to the airport in Jeddah, they will provide it for free as a marketing campaign from cell phone companies. They give it away for free. But this is very important so you can put your shoes. And uh, a lot of incidents, we had the, these good slippers that we invested in being lost, you know, so it's easy to lose them in the haram. And they're you're gonna be walking barefoot or you might, might buy one of these cheap slippers that will give you problems so always keep uh, your uh, shoes in in the light backpack and of course when you uh, pack your stuff you want to get the really nice pack with the wheels and the thing that you pull up so you will be mobile you want to be on the go and you don't want to have your group to slow down your group right um, when I went uh, like one of the members of the group had the old-fashioned bag so they had to carry it and they were you know it, it makes everything you know hard on them and hard on on the group itself so be mobile invest on the wheels you know they're, they're not expensive but make sure you just pull it up and you keep going so that is important other important things especially for families or, or more than one person who are going to invest in, in communication you need some unlocked cell phones I think a lot of the iPhones or the tablet they come unlocked right but if you don't have an unlock you might want to invest in something that is um, inexpensive the Nokia brands remember the back in the days there you can find them very cheaply now the cool thing about the Nokia maybe the Nokia 6600 you can unlock it easily and oh, of course it's a Symbian phone so you can use the Java Quran so you can use it as a digital Quran you can use it as a mp3 player you can use it as a an alarm clock so it, it has a multi-purpose but remember to take the adapter and to take the plugs that will plug into the international uh, plug um, this is for the people who live in um, the United States or the UK just to keep that in mind um, the travel agent will supply you with sim cards for the phone but a lot of the time these sim cards will not work you'll be surprised how uh, how much you you pay for a lot of things that you won't get but it won't be an issue when you get to the airport you can buy these sim cards they're prepaid plan they're very inexpensive and if you were with your family of course always make a plan on where to find yourself or where to meet if somebody um, or the group got lost okay so this is important to plan where do we meet if somebody got lost you would be surprised how many people will um, just go crazy just when, when you know when, when a lot of things you will find in Hajj is people push when they do tawaf that's why they don't, don't want to lose the group so keep that in mind one of the things I, I benefited from is I made a dua list dua list is good because you learned the best dua that people wanna have for you to make on their behalf and this is something that you can do of course 
So you go to your cousins, you, you have a list of dua, you put their names, and you ask them, what do you want me to do dua for you? So they will give you the best dua that they have. Some of the duas that I will share, one of them taught me a dua. May Allah make the judgment day the best day of my life. So this is a really good dua. Other duas are like, uh, well, there is a lot of duas. If we have time, we'll go into it. Uh, but other important things is, of course, you need your passport, you need your marriage certificate, you need your documents, um, the shot, the immunization shot the record, right? In America, you can get them from Walgreen, extremely inexpensive. But what you want to do, you want to make a, a photocopy of everything and you want to keep pictures, uh, additional pictures with you as well. Uh, these photocopies, you can give it to your to for the for someone in your hometown, and you can take some. Me personally, I had to use some of these photocopies because, you know what they do? They put your uh, passport in the buckets of passports, and good luck finding it. Other than that, um, some of the things that uh, when you pack, you might want to take some zip bags. They are good when you put the stones for the pebbles when you do the jamarat, and of course when you're in the airport, just in case. The law requires you to put liquids in the zip pack, you can use them as well. Um, toilet paper, it might be very useful as well. Uh, now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the foods in Hajj. If you guys know who I am, I do a lot of research when it comes to food, and I notice a lot of things that happen in Hajj that relates to food. So let's take a moment and talk about food and Hajj. Uh, one of the things that I did, which was very good, alhamdulillah, is I bought some of these energy bars or protein bars that comes in a big quantity, the economic pack. I took all of it with me, uh, not for myself necessarily, uh, but you will find a lot of people in need of it, right? So for yourself, just in case if you're weak, if you got hungry, you have, you know, fuel, you can fuel yourself because this is a bad day that you need a lot of energy for, right? But a lot of times, like we were doing tawaf, we found a family, they were an African family, who lost their group and they were by themselves and they didn't eat for an extremely long time and they were very hungry so we gave them a lot of these bars that we had with us and it as you can see it's something that you can benefit you can benefit uh, if you if you still have them by the time you come home you will find a lot of uh, people who would need it at in the haram around the haram trust me so this is something good other things that has to re relate to food in hajj that there is a lot of food in hajj alhamdulillah people will prepare food especially in the last days of hajj in Mina specifically. But what happens is because there are so many people, they have to prepare the food a day earlier and they make so much food. And if you know about the environment in Saudi Arabia, it's, it's ex extremely hot weather, especially, you know, at night, at day. And if you do operate a restaurant, you know something about food safety and danger zones. Unfortunately, there is bad food management that they will keep the food out for a whole day before they distribute it. And this is very dangerous because by the time it reaches the people, the food itself, it will be already spoiled. Our tent by itself, we had four incidents of poisoning. So this is something you have to keep in mind because when they give you the food, if it's spoiled, they're not going to tell you. One thing. Second thing, you will have a cough. Probably you will get the flu. The Hajj flu is a common flu. Uh, you will not be able to uh, know. So uh, keep that in mind. Be careful what... Uh, you know, um, especially the warm food that comes in Mena. Uh, a lot of people, I don't know if they were not able to continue the Hajj, but they had extreme poisoning uh, cases that we had just in our tent, four of them. And a lot of people who were, you know, you can just see the news how many uh, people got ill because of the food-borne diseases. Keep that in mind. I wish that I can provide some consultant to the food distribution system that's happening so maybe that will be something that we can do in the future inshallah but other than that um, be modest and you know, have respect for the food you will find a lot of perhaps people with that seem religious you will see a lot of food wastage that's one thing that will that broke my heart personally but you'll see some people who refer to themselves as scholars and you will find that wow there's so much food wastage they waste food uh, just keep that in mind that food, the topic of food is uh, is the relationship that Allah brought this food to us. It's the most one of the most important topics that how we learn our Rabb. But this is a, t a different topic. Let's go back to our checklist here. 
we kind of went away. So, what do you need? You need backup money, and you need money for the qurbani when you do the zabiha, right? If you do hajj tamattu, and uh, that is three hundred dollars to five hundred dollars, depends on where you where you do it. But you do need that money on hand. If I were you, I would take a plastic debit card with me just in case. Just in case if I lose it, it's not a big deal. And just in case if I need money, I can go to the ATM. And then another thing that relates to money is if your travel agent did not provide you checks with your passports when you go to the airport, most likely you would have to pay the Hajj fee at the time of the airport. Um, a lot of incidents we had that people did not receive their checks and they were told that they will receive it at when they reach the airport. Yeah, right. Good luck. Just have the expectation that nobody will meet you. Have the expectation that uh, that you will be lost on your, you will be on your own in the in the whole airport. That you there will be a lot of frustration. Have the expectation that nobody is going to uh, wait for you with a sign with your name. You have to be prepared. That's all I'm saying. That uh, per person is three hundred dollars. I think around three hundred and nine dollars maybe. Uh, per person for the Hajj fees. This is per person. So if you had a family, just make sure you take that additional money just in case if you did not take the checks. Uh, regarding money, you might need some money for uh, to just just in case if you need something to buy from the store or to buy to eat food. It's uh, uh, not much, but uh, some money will help as well. Um, if you do not speak the local language, if you have a pen and paper. Uh, that this is also something that uh, was uh, useful for women if you have a small scissor take a small scissor because you need to do the um, you know you don't have to shave of course you can cut but so sometimes the women will be looking for a scissor so that's something that you can take as well uh, nail clippers mm, well you're not supposed to cut your nails at the time of ihram but uh, I, you know if you, you stay a few days after hajj you might uh, you know, you might want to need them because you will probably have long nails by that time. So I think I got everything by now. Uh, this is like the things that I really needed when I went. Uh, so now I would like to um, give you some hints. We talked about, um, you know, having the extra money. And um, we talked about um, meeting or deciding, planning where to meet if somebody got lost. Um, any other things that you need like shampoo for example or anything else you might buy them for on from local shops just remember that when you use hand sanitizers they do have uh, scent in them so if you do get that scent in your hand you might have to do the slaughter so keep that in mind or if you use the shampoo by mistake they do have scent keep that in mind uh, you can use the soap to wash your hair as well so that is something that you can do um, of course the best advice to do is before you watch this video you're supposed to learn as much as you can about Hajj if you didn't do so this is not an important video the most important thing is to learn about the manasik to learn about what you need to do where you need to go and step by step follow one book okay and inshallah may Allah accept and I wish that you make dua for me and for my family and if you needed a tour or a guide or somebody to be a, as a companion with you, you can shoot me an email. I would be happy to go on anyone's behalf. If you guys, uh, you know, offer me to go, I will be happy. Thumbs up. I will put my email. I'll put the, the list as well in this um, the video box. Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah accept and that uh, you have a good hajj, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so other things that you might need. That could give you maybe a more luxury. Um, it's not necessary, but it's something definitely will make your life easier at Hajj is to take a sleeping bag. Investing in a small sleeping bag, it's not that uh, expensive. You know, it is a, it's a smaller uh, sleeping bag. A lot of times the sleeping bags come in a puffed size. You know, these things are uh, difficult to travel with, so you most likely will leave it there. But what happens when you wear an ihram, when you sleep, especially at the time of Mazdalafa, the ihram tends to get out of place and you're sleeping, you, you can't control that thing. So sleeping bag, what allows you to do is if you wear the bag, you can sleep and you don't have to worry about the ihram being misplaced. The other thing is, for the sister, also in Muzdalifah, Muzdalifah is like the lowest 
uh, humiliation that uh, you know the time of Hajj that we get through to humiliate ourselves in front of Allah. Uh, that you really everybody just um, there's no much uh, you should, nobody has to have kibber after that. What the sister can do is they can get something called an igloo tent. This is an igloo tent. These tents are cool because you can pop them up in two seconds. You can look them up online. Uh, they cost less than sixty dollars, and some people bought it for ten dollars. Uh, but for the sisters, if they want to like have some privacy time, they can fix their hijab or something. They can pop up the tent. It's a small tent. You can carry it with you. I don't know if this is something you want to carry in the airport. But uh, it is a luxury to have as well. Other uh, hints and tips I would like to offer is do not take a watch, a hand watch, because what happens, uh, prepare yourself to be in the state of ibadah for these long lines. There's going to be millions and millions and millions of people. So watch, looking at the watch, you will just give you more frustrated concern about ibadah, doing tasbih, reciting Quran, and inshallah may Allah accept.